Hi, and thank you both for coming on such short notice. Our biggest client has a problem with datatier.net. It was discovered that every store procedure has using statements at the top of each file, and all of these using statements are not needed to compile. The program will still work, but they're doing some analysis and they have this new code engine they're trying to implement and it discovered these files are not needed. They asked us if we had a solution before they fixed 2200 files. So gentlemen, do you have any ideas? Sorry about this, we wrote that code really quickly a long time ago. Those store procedures are only created if they don't already exist, so what we're going to have to do is write a utility to fix the existing files. Going forward, I found another bug. We're going to have to fix the delete because the delete never tested getting down to zero. If you get down to zero, there's a bug that refers to zero, the index of the first element, and it's not there. So that's a second bug. And then the third issue is we need to fix the database that's rolled out for new clients. Another way is just to delete all the store procedures and they get recreated next time you build with datatear.net. I suggested deleting the files and they told me they have security procedures in every one of these files. So they just asked us if we could remove the using statements at the top of each file. Our NuGet package datajuggler.ultimatehelper makes it real simple to parse text and words out of files. I can write a program in about 15 minutes. Now hang on now with that 15 minute talk, your salary is paid by billable hours. We have 4 hours of testing for every 15 minutes, right? And can you make a video so that other people could watch this? I'll get right on it. Garrett, can you do the updates for datatier.net and can you also fix the database? Yeah, it sounds really simple. Do you want me to make a video of that also? Yeah, go ahead and record the video. We'll include it at the end. Maybe their support personnel wants to watch it. Alright, well send me a link to the video once you guys get it up. Good job. I like meeting with YouTube. We get our meetings done in about five minutes. I can play golf this afternoon. Hi everybody, and sorry for that long introduction. If you're not an iClone fan, you can take off now because the rest is going to be programming stuff. But if you're a C Sharp developer or want to learn it, I'm going to be showing you how to easily parse text files. I know there's probably lots of ways to do it the default way, but I'll show you how I do it using datajuggler.ultimatehelper. And I will go ahead and get started. So let's just say create new project. And give this a second. I'll get a drink. Okay. I am going to type in Windows Forms. And we want .NET, which is for .NET 5. And I'm going to browse for a specific location because I want to put it here in datatier.net in the tools folder. So some other people might want to use this little utility. Although, as I mentioned in the video, all you have to do is delete your store procedure objects and they will uh, get recreated if you rebuild with datatier.net. And I'll do that in this video also. But what we're going to do first is go ahead and just call our project. We're going to call it using statements removal tool. Something like that. Now, there's one bug I have found that even though we just created a .NET 5 project, Microsoft hasn't got around to fixing the templating because this project here got created as .NET Core 3.1, I'm willing to bet. That's what the last, yes, that's what's happened in my previous attempt at this, previous two attempts. This is third attempt. Okay, because finally I found a bug in datajuggler.win.controls and it's been fixed and updated, so that's what... Uh, so now we have it at .NET 5. I'm going to go ahead and... Sorry, I was trying to close that. It says opening the file, even though I was trying to close it. So that means we're trying to go to the designer. Okay, so that's fine. 
What we're going to do first though, I am going to close this for just a second and I'm going to build and show you this one little error we have to fix. It's not an error, it's a warning and I want to, I just like to fix it before I start a new project because if you don't fix it now, when are you going to fix it? But it's a really simple, uh, let me go to error list. <sighs> there, sorry. Okay, see this right here? If you search for, so if you just edit the project file, <clears throat> this right here has Windows Desktop, and they haven't fixed that. That's no longer necessary. So all you got to do is get rid of that. And now if we build, <clears throat> excuse me, our warning should have went away. Let's go to View Error List. Okay, so now we have no warnings. I just like to start the project, and hopefully they'll fix that soon. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just rename our form to mainform.csharp. And then yes, I want it to update the references. Okay, next I'm going to open up the designer file, which we had open a second ago. But Okay, excuse me. Now what I'm going to do is change the name of this to using statements removal tool. Now if you don't have a datatier.net project for you to practice on, you can download data tier dot, you can clone or download data tier dot net from here in case you haven't done so. I'll go ahead and show you that really quickly. And here it is. So you can go ahead and clone or download this. And this project has its own data tier dot net class library, which is right here data tier dot net dot data library. Then I, this is kind of new. This is before I had stuff as a template. This was the first one. So I used it to build itself. But what we're going to do, you can clone or download that project and each of these, I'll show you the problem as I talked about in the video. So if you go to Data Access Component, Store Procedure Manager, Insert Procedures, and you look at each of these, you know, this doesn't hurt anything. It's obviously still going to compile, but I have every file has this and I'll show you the, we'll, we'll fix the bug in datatier.net also where these are uh, created for store procedures but that's the end of this video or it might be part two but for what we're going to do right now is just write a little program that we're going to create four directories I mean we're going to salute we're going to browse for one let's go ahead and build our control to show you what we're building so it's a little bit easier for me to show you so the startup position is going to be center screen which I have wanted that to be the default for 18 years and I've been ignored <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, the very next thing I want to do is go to uh, startup position. Let's see, okay, the scale auto scale mode. I'm going to turn that to none, and now we're going to change the font because I like a little bit bigger font. I can't see font size nine. Okay, and we'll go with twelve for Verdana and twelve is what I like. Okay, and now we're going to add a couple of NuGet packages to our solution. So, we're going to say manage NuGet packages. And first, we're going to choose data juggler .ultimate helper, And this right here is the new version for .NET 5. We're going to install it. It was just updated today. Okay. And now we are going to add data juggler dot win <coughs> dot controls excuse me and this was also just updated to dot net 5 and I didn't do it multi-targeting so if you want to use one of the dot net frameworks you have to use an older version okay and now we have that and the last thing I'm going to show you and I'll include the link to the description you don't have to have this, but if you want to, this is my tool Regionizer. It's a Visual Studio package. It installs into Visual Studio. There's a VSIX you have to install, and I'll show you the link in the description. But after you install it, just come over here to Extensions, and it'll show up right here. There it is. Like is. I've already got it here, but once you get it docked, then it'll stay there next time you start Visual Studio. But I'll show you why I like it, so but we'll do that here in a second. First, we're going to create... Um, 
now that we have our NuGet package, we're going to add a label text box browser control. Okay, so here's our label text box browser control. You see that's a little, uh, <coughs> excuse me, box for a, uh, a button there. Now, if I change this, I'll just really quickly change the theme. Okay, it's already starting on that. If I change, that's, that's wood. Now if I go to dark, okay, now I've got a dark button. I'm going to use that. And I'm going to change our background here. You'll be able to download this project by the time I post this uh, video, so you'll be able to get all this. But I am just going to, I don't want that. I'm going to go to background image, and <clears throat> we're going to import this file from datatier.net. Images. Uh, Sorry, there's a couple of other places there's images in this project. Okay, let me go up to resources, client, and then we have resources, deep black. That's it right there. Okay, so that's just going to be deep black. That's going to be our background. And now we're going to change our font. I mean the, the label side. The label width is 80. We want it to be 120. And then we're going to change our label text to this is going to be data tier folder. Okay, so that's going to have to be a little bigger than 120, but it doesn't matter. And we'll go up even bigger, 160. Okay, so now we have this. So the nice thing about that is. Uh, these controls, you know, they have a label. I'm gonna show you another one. We're gonna add, and then I'll, then we'll wire up this uh, the event listener for this button right here. But we'll do that here in a second. First, we're gonna go back to our solution, our toolbox, and say label text box control. This is basically the same as that, but without the button. Now I don't have the obviously that's a little bug there. I'll go ahead and make this a little bigger. Line it up to about there. And I'm going to make this label color. We'll name all these controls right here in a second. Oops, sorry. Okay, and we're going to make this label text. This is going to be uh, alphabetically, the first one is delete prox. And then the, we'll copy this a few times. One, two, three. Okay. Sorry, let me go to this one. See, I like these because it, instead of putting a label on the control in a text box or a label in a checkbox or a label in combo box and things like that, I've got a label. This toolbox, I'll show you that really quickly since we're doing this tutorial. But here's all the ones that I have a. Uh, Label text box, label text box browser, a label label. So if you just want to display two labels, and then a label combo box and label checkbox. So it's just something to, you know, a little faster than uh, creating. And the combo box has some neat features too, but we're not going to show them in this video. Okay, let me get all this lined up. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to name everything. So first, I'm going to name this one Data Tier uh, Folder Control. So Okay, and this is going to be the delete, we'll just make it short, delete control, and then this is going to be the fetch control, this is going to be the uh, insert control, and this is going to be the update control. And I did not mean to do that. I knew I was going to do it eventually. Okay, so we're going to delete that. We're going to get an error as soon as I do it. So let's close this. Okay. Yeah, this designer is different than the .NET Framework version. It's a little, uh, I don't know, it seems a little, it, it's growing on me, but it's a little slower. It seems like a lot too. So let's find that error in the designer and we'll fix it. Okay. All right, so we'll just take this line out. Didn't even want that to happen. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and just close that for now. So next thing we're going to do, sorry, we don't need that anymore. Okay, 
So let me go back to our designer. Everything should build again. And we'll finish renaming. Sorry about that. I was in the... Okay, so now, and that when we went back, so let's see if all these are named correctly. Okay, so this one needs to be the update control. And then that text is going to be the label text is going to be update prox. This one's going to be insert. And then this one is going to be fetch. <clears throat> the fetch contains two files, the others per, per table. The other three only uh, contain one. The fetch has a find and a fetch all, which is like for a list or collections. Okay, and that is fetch procs. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, I want these four to be... I'm going to make them read, uh, un, well, they're going to be not editable. There's read only, there's enabled, but we're going to use a property here called editable. And by setting it to false, I like editable because the label stays enabled, but the text box doesn't. So instead of setting the entire control, it doesn't look right because the label still doesn't display. So now what we're going to do, whenever this folder is selected, we're going to be able to populate these four because if you look at, I'll just show you here for data tier. Oh, I'll open up pixeldatabase.net. That was the whole reason. Let me show you on my site real quickly. Okay, this is the the site where I discovered. This is my project where I discovered this bug of all these using statements I've been doing for 15 years, and I didn't realize they were even uh, needed for these four folders. They were needed in other places, but not for these four folders, so I felt kind of stupid. So here's the data tier, and just to show you if you open up, I've already done the insert, but if I go to like the, uh, I mean, I've already done the delete, but if I go to one of these, every one of these files have a using statements, and you'll notice here in a second they're going to turn gray. Give that a second there. And if you say remove and sort usings, but all of these, this is, I want to do it for every single file, and I'll, in the, so we'll go ahead and I'll just say save, it doesn't matter, because we're going to, what we're going to do now is we're going to wire up this event when the button is selected. When you select this folder, we're going to select everything down below it, the, the four other folders. So we're going to go into code. This is the part you might want to have Regionizer installed. So I'm going to go format doc, excuse me, format document, and that just takes our document, and I will go ahead and do this. Okay, get rid of the unused using statements till we add some. And here I'm going to say this is the main form for this app, just to give it something. Here, this is something you might like. If you click auto comment, and now I'm going to hit control and shift at the same time and it types in that comment for you and I'll have a video about that a new one coming soon but it's on my to-do list I've got a big to-do list okay so now we have everything we need except for we're going to do a couple more things I know we're going to need I'm going to add a few region one for methods sorry I'll just copy that this one's going to be events and then the last one is going to be properties. Okay, so now we have our regions we're going to need. Now we're going to create our folder. Now, if this was anything commercial or for paid, I might create a kind of a class object to handle this, but this is all just in this form for a simple little tool like this. I'm going to just call this string data tier folder. And I'm going to add a few more. This is going to be delete prox folder. Let me copy that to my clipboard. Oops, I got too much. Whatever I just did there. And one more. Okay, and then this is going to be update. Insert. And fetch. And now this is the part... One of the things I like about Regionizer, if I say create properties, I get this, uh, it creates the uh, property for each of those. 
And I realize a lot of people like to use the, the get and set, the automatic ways of doing it with the property, but I prefer this if you have the setter and getter already set, because if you have any debugging to do, it's a lot easier to determine the issue. So we got this, and one thing that I'm going to do, only I'm only going to do this for this one class here, but if you say data tier folder, I'm going to say create has property, and that gives me, instead of having to test for string dot is null or empty, now the reason that's not there is because using system we took it out but now that compiles so that's just a way it also works for objects if you have an object it'll say like this is not equal to null but I, I use that a lot for it makes your classes are you know pretty easy to mix for readable code is what I was trying to say okay so now we have our five little uh, properties I'm gonna wire up our interface so we're going to say using data juggler dot win dot controls and using data juggler dot win dot controls dot interfaces and the last thing we're going to do is add our ultimate helper that's the uh, class library that has our stuff for parsing it's going to make it simple for us okay so now what we want to do is make our main form implement i text changed okay and you're going to notice we don't implement that so what we're going to do is say quick actions and refactoring and say implement implement interface but uh, it's going to put it somewhere probably down here sorry yeah this is the one problem with i like regions and nobody else does but there we go so now our event is here so now what we're going to do whenever this event fires we're going to say this dot data tier folder equals text update our property okay and now update child properties and we're gonna create a method to do that rather than um, well we can just do it here I'm gonna add a, 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 a using statement here using system.io and we're just gonna say this dot delete control dot text equals path dot compined excuse me path.combine I can't talk data tier folder uh, sorry delete procedures and that's just a safe way where it it adds the backslash I mean I've probably written a million times the if doesn't end with a backslash before I learned that okay and now we're just going to change this to be update this will be insert and this will be fetch and I just happen to know this because I've done this a whole bunch okay and this is not going to be delete control it's going to be fetch control insert control and update control okay so far so good and I probably don't need it but I'll just say refresh okay update everything so now we have this now what we want to do is add a button first let's just see if our little uh, little thing we built works our little uh, browser so that's let's do that before we do anything else so. oh, oh wait it's not gonna work and I'll tell you why we have to tell this uh, button it doesn't have any like auto hookup way sorry I forgot in the middle of the compiling or before we started so we're gonna go to our constructor here and I'm gonna add a method called init now I didn't want that but I'll just take this right here and now I'm gonna put my mouse back over here and I'm gonna hit control shift again and that's just gonna create the comment for me automatically then I'm going to create a method but I don't want to have a string and an easy way to change the return type is changing that to event and write back so now I'm going to create an event and there's one bug it's going to create this comment twice just delete it that's been on my list for about seven years and it's too easy to fix so I haven't bothered to fix that so now what I want to do <coughs> excuse me so we have our init method we're going to say this dot data tier folder control dot text on text change listener equals this 
which means, see this is an interface of iText changed, so that way whenever that the on text changed or the text changed event fires for that control, it's going to call this method right here and it'll populate this for us. So let's go ahead and run it. Now it should work if all go goes well. Okay, so we're going to browse for our data tier folder. I am going to just go to my quick access because I have data tier.net here and I am going to go to uh, data tier.net, that data library, data access component, store procedure manager. Actually, scratch that. We're going to test on another one. You don't have to because by the time you see it, this will work. But I'm going to, I don't want to mess up. I've got backups, but I want to keep this program. Uh, I'm going to use another one just because of the fact that I don't want to mess up my. Uh, the, the, if I mess up datatier.net, it's a pain in the butt to fix it. I can do it, but I don't like to. So we will just go to GitHub, and I'll just choose pixeldatabase.net. I've got plenty of backs up, backups for that. Okay, so here is, oh, it's in, not GitHub, it's right here. I share the NuGet library that powers Pixel Database, but I don't share the website. I don't know why, but I might if I get a thousand subscribers someday. Okay, and I want to go to data. So that is our folder. So we're going to. Oh, wait. I just realized. Okay, one more thing we got to do. Sorry. And this I could either do from the designer or I could do it through code. I've already got this open, so I'll just show you. We are going to. There's a mode that says a selection mode. Uh, oh, where is it? I'll do it through code. Hang on. Okay, let me go to init. Okay. Wire up the button. And the next uh, data tier folder control dot. It's either. Let me figure out the, the property name. Uh, File dot mode. No. Sorry, I've got this property. The app tell it it's either file mode or uh, folder. Hang on. It's funny. I even I forget stuff that I haven't. Okay, we'll find it. We'll just go to the. Let me go to the. Let me go to my num. Hang on. I can find this in. Uh, we'll open up data. Uh, we'll open up the data juggler at Ultimate Helper project because that'll have it in there. Sorry, my mind just went blank on uh, this property. I thought I was doing good. Nope, it's not this project. It is oh data juggler dot win dot controls. Man, I can't I can't remember this. Hang on, I know I know this. Sorry, I just can't I can't remember this. It's got to be something like fail. Okay, let's go to. Data juggler dot win dot controls and get this. Sorry, this is a uh, not something I meant to do. Okay. Edit mode enum. No. Browse type enum. Okay, sorry. I'm just sitting there like, what the crap is this property called? Browse type equals browse. Okay, let me add that up here. But I want to just take that and put it. There. Okay, sorry about that. That was a brain fart on my part. I haven't worked on this project in like forever. And we want to select a folder. So now. Okay, so now we close the designer. Okay, sorry about that. I had a complete 
it's one of those things I hadn't worked on and I can tell I'm getting older because things that I used to know are getting uh, purged to make room for new things alright so now we're gonna select pixel database so we want to go here and we'll just go to data and I'm gonna select this folder okay now you'll notice it filled in our four projects for us I didn't make that big enough for us to see so we're gonna redo it not that it really matters but I just wanna before we start changing files I kinda like to read what we're changing so let me make this a little bigger and this could be a really big path for some people so we'll just we'll make this one way out here make this one all the way to here and then I'll go to oops, go to select that one and then select uh, format make same size okay so now we've got that and I'll move them all back here a little okay that's fine that should be enough okay try that again I just wanted to wouldn't really matter we're gonna add a button next I just wanted to get to this point that we have okay and we'll select hopefully it starts us in that same folder again it does good so select folder okay so now we can see I just wanted to so now we've got the update insert fetch and delete procedures folders so next thing we're gonna do is just add a button so this is the part where this video really starts so I'll make a note that how far are we into the video so 28 minutes into the video I start uh, our 15 minute video that I told him about I told my boss just then although that's just a fictional person because I'm the boss at my imaginary company so next we're gonna go to view code and what we're going to do now, oh, let's go to the designer, sorry, went to the wrong place. Okay, and now we're just going to add a button. Good old ordinary button, and we will just click start. Sorry, line it up there. Make it a little bigger. Probably won't stay that big. We're going to change our button up. Okay, and this is going to be the, we'll call it process or something. Okay, the button, uh, the text is just going to say start, something like that. And then next we're going to go to background image. First we're going to make it stretch, oops, sorry stretch and then background image we're going to import and it's going to be this okay and then we're going to change the back color to web transparent and then that will get us next we're going to go to the button style uh, flat style sorry my windows form experience has not been recent Okay, is often so that's flat and then we're going to go to flat appearance this is going to be um, okay, I don't think that likes transparent there yeah, it does okay there's one place here it doesn't if you go to border color yeah that I don't think likes transparent yeah that doesn't okay, I knew one of them didn't like it so we'll just leave that alone okay the next thing we want is we want to have font of uh, lemon chiffon so we're going to change our font our four color and I'll just type in lemon chiffon after all these years I can finally spell it okay and I am going to make that bold font to be kind of like the labels up there kind of matches a little better all right and then next uh, Flat. There's one other thing with flat appearance I gotta do, and that was border size of zero. Okay, I knew there was something I forgot. Okay, and then next we're gonna give us let me kind of arrange our button. This doesn't need to be this big. Actually, I'm gonna put a graph. So I'll move this down. So let me get a graph. Oops, 
sorry, progress bar, brains again. Okay, I'll line our progress bar up kind of about there to. We only have, uh, well, we could figure out the folders. I'll show you an easy way to do that. So we're going to just call this graph. That's why I was saying graph. I always name it to graph. And then I'm going to set up our minimum is already set to zero. Whenever we, uh, we'll make this invisible. Okay. And now we're going to set up our button. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay. First thing we want is, let me go to our mouse enter, and I'll go back here and do a mouse leave. And the reason I do this is just to change the cursor. I'll show you that format selection. And we'll do the other one down here also. And I've got one bug to fix because Roslyn compiler hates regions. This was not, let me find where that bug was, this right here. This was not like that prior to 2013 Visual Studio. It worked and then 2015 it quit working, but oh well. So now we have this. We're just gonna say cursor equals cursors dot uh, hand. And I'm gonna hit control shift there and it types that in for us the comment if you have auto comment selected and I'm gonna say cursor for the mouse leave equals cursors dot default and I'll put and it oops I did that twice somehow but if you hit control shift there it types in that comment again and that uses regular expressions is how that works okay so we've got that and the next thing we gotta do is our click event the actual making this get fun okay and we will go click okay and this is where the actual processing is going to start so we'll get our process button Let me, now the first thing we got to do is get our list of files so we're just going to create a list of files Oop. okay hang on let me add system.collections.generic right here And we'll change that. It, when I hit list, it uh, filled in the rest of that. And that's just going to be a string. And this is going to be files to process. And all the files are the same, so it doesn't really matter. We just need four folders to look in for files. So we're going to say create property. And once again, I'm going to say has property. So now I have this without doing anything there. I've got an easy way to say if has files to process then that means my uh, list of files exist I don't have to you know check for null or write code to do that that's other ways to do it too but so now we have this we are going to get our list of files to do that we are going to use this class called file helper and we think we already have ultimate helper here we do so I'm going to use uh, files to process equals file helper dot get files recursively I don't think I need it recursively they're all at the same level actually I'm gonna do it recursively never mind change that thought files to process and really and truly I don't need those other four folders I'm just uh, that's more for display purposes we didn't really have to have it now that I that I realize how this method works but basically what we're going to do is we're going to go to the data tier folder and then filter extensions is going to be we're going to say string extension equals dot C sharp we want only C sharp files and then we're going to say list string extensions equals new list string and we're going to say extensions dot add extension okay add this item and here I'm going to hit control shift and that comment is typed in for me because it that's something the regionizer knows how to do the auto commenter knows how to do that so now we're going to say 
get files recursively, we're going to pass in our list of extensions is going to be just extensions. And we don't want to remove the extension. No, we want the whole file to come back because we need it. Okay. Wait, that doesn't like that. What are we passing in? List stream. I don't understand. Why would that not be? What is that saying? Hang on. Oh, ref. Sorry. Okay. That, that was there for a reason. I needed that to come back. So now we're going to say, uh, get the files to process. Now here, something else you may like. This is using a data juggler dot ultimate helper. If list helper dot has one or more files, files to process. Sorry. And that's just safer. That's a safe way instead of saying if the, f the list exists and the list has one or more items. Another thing, there's also has X or more items. So if you need to have at least five items or 10, for example, you can also use that method. But, and I'll fill in the comment. Not sure if that, it did have it. Okay. So my comment was typed in for me there using my auto commenter. So this is a lot of my stuff all works together. Nobody else seems to appreciate this stuff but it all works for me so that's what it does so now we have our files to process so here finally uh, 35 minutes into this video 38 I'm gonna get to the the whole point of what I like um, this text parser is coming up is the part we're getting to so we're just gonna say list well we're gonna do this in a method but then we're gonna do this first we're gonna set up our graph this dot graph dot Minimum, we'll just say equals zero. It's already that, but we'll just set it just to be specific. Equals files to process dot count, and this dot graph dot value equals zero, just in case for any reason this is being run again. So set up the graph. Now what we want to do for each string file to process in files to process and that's the lowercase variable but it's just as well go ahead and use it. it didn't really matter but and here I'm gonna hit control shift and that typed in my uh, comment for me there so that's the auto commenter is kind of neat I think the so next thing I want to do is I want to say um, we're gonna say list text line okay that is not showing up so we need to go to ultimate helper dot objects and we'll come over here back to where we were uh, text lines equal word parser dot get text lines we gotta get all the text of the file sorry I could do this all in one line but it's easier string file text equals File dot read all text file to process. Okay, get the text of this file. We this should almost always be here, but we're going to do this anyway. Just say text helper dot exist file text. And the reason why I use that over not string dot is null or empty for one thing with IntelliSense I can type that faster even if it's one I've tested that but the other thing is if you have up to five items you can do this in one list you don't have to you know you can like that so that's why I use it so that's why my ultimate helper NuGet package exists for things like this so what we're gonna do is just one though so just and here I'm gonna write my little comment that was a auto comment for us so all this is kind of stuff I've done a zillion times so I got tired of typing the same comment I wrote stuff to do that and here I'm gonna move this up here okay so now we're gonna get the text lines and we're gonna say file text get the text lines and now we're gonna say another if list helper dot has one or more items text line that it almost has to but you know it never hurts to to be a, that was an auto comment there never hurts to to you know be extra careful that's one of those things that that's why I see a lot of this stuff and this new stuff has like null 
parameter type checking or something. I don't know. I, I never saw any value in that because I'm so built into testing for null that I don't have, ever have that problem. Okay, next thing I want to do is we are going to create a string builder. So we're going to have to add system.txt up to our little using statements. Okay, and I'll collapse a few of our regions we don't need at the moment. Kind of like this just to make everything... Uh, Okay, we're doing this all in a method. We could have done this uh, calling it to some methods, but this is a quick little utility. Okay, so what I want to do next is create a string builder. Okay. And we're going to say for each text line, line in text lines, this is going to be an auto comment fills that in for us. Let me get a drink real quick. Okay, sorry about that. Then the next thing we are going to do is just say all we need to know is when does the namespace start. So what we're going to do is let me go look at our uh, other instance of Visual Studio. If I open up this Okay, so the namespace, we want a line that starts with this. Doesn't really matter what else, you know, if that's the beginning of the line, then that's the line we want. So the first one that starts with that. So we'll start with each new file. I'm going to create a little uh, local variable up here. Doesn't need to be anything. And we'll just call this uh, namespace reached or something like that uh, equals false. And then each time we start a new file, yeah, we'll reset. Namespace reached equals false. So now what we want to do is we're going to if line.txt dot starts with namespace namespace reached equals true. Set the value here. I don't know if I have an auto nope, no auto comment for that. So I'll just have to say if the little, ah, I can't type. If the line starts with the namespace. And I realize that's kind of, you know, redundant to have the comment, but I've worked in places you had to have a comment for almost everything you wrote. So now we're gonna go ahead and just say, but this is really the way this needs to be. If namespace reached then we want to do this else hang on that's where our we're going to start uh, copying that to our string builder okay so here we're just going to say we want to copy um, so we need to say sp.append uh, line dot text plus environment dot new line because when you parse that with up here when we parse the uh, text lines it takes out the new line at the end of each line so when you write it back out you just have to add a line back line ending okay append the ending new line character Okay, so now we have this, and we're just going to say, uh, and I could have done that, I mean, if I wanted to, I could just not write it like that, and just say sp.append environment.newline, if I wanted to. Okay, append the, uh, the line text and ending new line, that's fine. So next thing I want to do is go to, and I'll put a little, oops, sorry, come on. Okay, that was an auto comment there. So now we have our namespace reach. We don't have to, the rest of the file is all going to just be appended. So we're going to say sp.append uh, line.txt. Same thing as this, I can just copy. Okay, right. that put one too many. Okay, so that will, by the time we get to the end of the file, let's see, 
right here. Now what we need to do is say file.delete and this is, you know, I would back up your project before you do this, obviously. I have mine on GitHub and other backups just in case, but I know this won't do anything that harmful. Okay, so now we have, uh, sorry, if file.delete, what is our uh, file, file to process, sorry. Okay, we're going to delete the file, delete this file. And then we're going to say, and we're going to look at one before we just let this thing rip, but it should work. This is my famous last words. And next we're going to say uh, file.appendall text. And it's going to be file to process sv.toString. Oh, our sv needs to be up here. Or I need to. Sorry, that was supposed to be right here. Okay, so now we have... That has to go away. And it's always a little under on my estimate, but that's because I'm recording a lot of it has to do too. So sb.toString. So that will write out the file. Okay. Write out the file without the namespace. But we're going to do one thing before we do that. And this is going to be uh, before we do this we're going to say sb dot <coughs> insert. Is there an insert? Yes. And that's going to be at the beginning. Uh, oh no, 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 no. That's not what I want. Okay, we want the first two lines to be our string builder. So hang on. Sorry about this. I was thinking for a second, and talking's not my strong suit. So we're going to say uh, append two blank lines. I want this to start on like line three. So we're just going to say sb.append environment.newline. And I'll do the same thing for one more. That way, the, the, the code will start on line three and now this should work but we want to update the graph on each one graph dot value plus plus uh, actually I can just type an auto comment for that sorry I forgot I had that working okay uh, I'm trying to think if there's um, we'll say this um, I was gonna say this dot if graph.value modulus oh every 10 it indented over there I hate that but that's okay this dot uh, refresh I don't need this but that was not supposed to be cap blocks update everything okay update the graph every 10 records and I can't that's an update so I know I couldn't spell somewhere okay so I think that is everything we're gonna do so we're gonna before we start this just to be a hundred percent safe I'm gonna back up my little folder we're gonna be copying so let me go to my uh, blazer oops blazer pixel database and I'll just go to my data folder and copy it. And I'm going to put it in my backup folder. Okay. This makes me feel better. That just in case I totally mess something up. But it's always nice to have an undo. I feel sorry for anybody that works in the real world. Alright, well, we're going to see if this works. Uh, no guarantees, but... You know, I I think this is going to work what we just wrote, but we may have to debug it if not. So first we're going to go ahead and uh, select our folder. That is actually our folder. And now we're just going to hit, oh, i got to do one more thing. When this starts, we got to turn the progress bar to visible. Sorry, that was the one thing I forgot in our event process button. Uh, <clears throat> 
this dot graph dot visible equals true and here I'll just say refresh application dot do events this kind of forces it to update everything before it starts processing I want the graph visible it'll be a value of zero but at least it's uh, visible okay so now we're ready sorry I just wanted to make sure Okay, so as far as my compiler in my brain uh, has some asynchronous stuff that finishes after I press the compile button. Okay, here we go. Hang on, everybody. Okay, we probably got an error. All right, could not find the file. So let's see. Oh, uh, hmm, that's really weird. Okay, we're going to uh, figure out what's going on because that's not what's supposed to be. Oh. Sorry, I was just trying to think. It's trying to go to .NET Windows. I need to... Hmm. Okay, we're going to debug that. So let's start over. Before, I don't think it's done anything. We're going to start over and go to our uh, files to process. I want to see how many it gets. Because it should only get files. We may have to write a little uh, routine to only get the the ones that end with how many files 444 okay that's too many okay we only want I obviously did our extensions wrong hang on alright so sorry I wanted to bug this and I'm sorry I'm not gonna I'm trying not to stop this video cuz I'll so let's go look at our um, I need to look at my ultimate helper class and see why I'm not passing in the right uh, thing here. So go to this. I may have had that. Nope. Okay. And go to file helper. Get files. Okay get file names without extension yeah filter by extension the name is not just okay sorry I'm just I'm not seeing what I uh, need to see so I guess I'm gonna try that let's go back I'm gonna try that uh, extension I think I might need to put that there let me try that again we'll just see what that does because I think we're only supposed to get about a certain number but I don't think it's near that high nope let me uh, figure out what's going on here Oh, I'm not going to be able to step into that because I'm going to have to add it as the project. Okay. <sighs> it's going to be a long video, but we're going to go ahead and I want to debug this, so I'm going to add. Uh, Ultimate Helper. Okay, and now I'm going to have to go to Manage NuGet Packages, take that out. Okay, and now I'm going to add a reference to the project. Okay, and now I'm not going to bother with that for this right now. We can just say, this. now I can step into that, so sorry. You can always uh, download the the project if you don't want to use the NuGet library. But first, I need to know why this isn't working. So I don't think 444 is our right number of files, but I think it's supposed to be about 126 per uh, each of the four, maybe 130. Oh wait, I mean it gets it super fast. So I'm 
speed is not the issue, but the getting the right list. I think we're getting the wrong list. Let me go to F11 and step into this now. Okay. So now I want to go to the... Uh, oh, it's calling this crapper. Let me go to the filter by extension part. Hang on. Filter. Filter extensions. Here it is. Else if filter. Wait a minute. Okay. I just want to run this and see. So does it have filter? Count. Oh, okay. I called the same method twice. It's uh, doubling it on us. It's not what we want. So I'm sorry. I'm going to have to... Uh, figure out what the crap I'm gonna pause my video for one second okay I'm back I'm sorry I had a complete brain I'm getting sleepy obviously I get up like at 3 in the morning a lot of days and today but anyway I'm gonna show you what I did the reason why I was doing it, I didn't have I had this I didn't pass in the extensions to that method so I'm sorry we don't even need this I can now remove it so well we'll go ahead and run it let me before I take it out I want to make sure uh, let's see how many files we get back now that I pass in our list of extensions probably be, go a lot smaller than where we had it so let's see sorry about that Oops, close this sometimes I get sleepy and brain stops functioning properly okay select folder start okay zero so that's not good either so we went from too many to zero so <clears throat> let's uh, find out okay I'm gonna not sure exactly what I need I haven't done this in so long sorry I need to update the documentation I realize but I'll try this one more time luckily now it's really easy to test now that all you have to do is just start that select and start Okay, we are there. That is, sorry about this, that sometimes my, uh, but it's probably good for you to see, you know, if something goes wrong, what you do. But let's, uh, so let's just see if we can get this one of these. Uh, it's not very big. I was trying to get the whole window. Yeah, oh well, it's a really big file. We'll just go ahead and go through one. I just want to make sure uh, that this works the way that I think it's going to work. Okay, and should go to about the sixth or seventh line before we hit namespace reached. Okay, let me see what these line texts are saying. Looks like we might have went too far. No, we're still in the using statement, so some of these have a bunch. Okay. Okay, and this will be an end region right here. This will be a space, space, and then this should be a namespace reached. Okay. Uh, yeah, we wanted to append that uh, line for the namespace. And now we're just going to do this. So I'm going to just let this, I know, well, I want to finish one file. So let's get down here, make sure this all. Uh, Okay, pen to the text. All right, so I'm gonna just let this rip, see what happens. It's always fun to see our little, uh... okay, I didn't put a message box at the end, I should have. I should have put a little, uh... so I wanna just come down here and we'll put a little thing here just says, let me see where the, just do it down here.
Okay. So I'll just say message box dot show, and we'll say uh, oh, the import has finished. Done. I don't know which one of those show up, but that's fine. Show a message box. Okay, so now I'm not going to run it again. What we're going to do is go over to pixeldatabase.net and see how we did. Looks like we did exactly what I was trying to do. Let's open up a couple of these. So let's see. That was our little thing. Sorry I had a little bit of a brain fart there, but uh, it actually did do... A lot of these don't have any... Uh, the only code in most of these is the store procedure name. I look back, I could have done this in like a schema definition file not had this many um, classes per each folder but it, it is what it is at this point all right well that was our little utility I'm gonna get this checked into github our, our little utility did work um, the, the part that you know despite me being, me being really stupid for not remembering how to use my own controls because I have too many projects but the the text line parsing the you know I think that works really well as well as the, uh, I didn't even show you the word parser, but if you ever need to get words, the word parser dot get words works really well also. This has been a long video, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop it, but thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or video suggestions, please let me know. Peace out. Okay, everybody, I'm back, and I'm now going to uh, close some of these things, and we're going to fix datatier.net. So that's the next part that needs to be fixed as part of our little assignment. So we're going to make this video super long, but we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to um, datatier.net. Let me open up my... There we go. Okay, and I'm thinking this will only take five or ten minutes, is my guess. But my boss is out playing golf, as he said, so it's one of those things that, you know, took me four hours, but took me five minutes to, to, to find it. Okay, give this a second. Okay, now you notice here the, as I mentioned, these store procedures don't have any uh, text in them before I close this down. But the, uh, the store procedure object they inherit from does. So that's why uh, I use these objects. So let me close all this stuff. Yeah. And now what we're going to do is go to... I'm going to edit a project and I'll show you our bug and I'll see if I can... I'm sure I can fix it pretty quickly. I just want to duplicate the bug. So we're going to go to pixeldatabase.net. Edit project go to store procedures edit okay I've already done all this but let's say um, you add one I'll just call this system okay and then if you delete it I'm not getting the error earlier I got an error let's see uh, well it's not gonna get an error let me let me open up a project that hasn't been, uh, hang on, well though, I've already messed with this project, so let me open up this other project, give me one second, let me open up, this is one that's fine, and I just want to go to edit, this is where I got the bug earlier, I don't know if I'm going to get it again, but I started deleting these, and I got a bug on the last one, not sure if I'm going to get it, but we'll see. Nope. Save. Okay, so there's our error. An error occurred. The error thrown was. Hang on, let me get my magnifier glass because I couldn't read that if my life depended on it. SQL client exception. Project update has too many arguments specified. Okay. That is a. Um, that's interesting that we're getting that error because we're doing a delete. Um, for procedure so hang on let me uh, let me build data tear dot net is me open me I gotta change one thing sorry should have done this before we started but I'm gonna work on data tear dot net and it's in this other database so let me go to my app dot config and go to data tier dot database dot dev I keep another one 
I don't know why, but for a while I was working on the dev one. Oh, oh, I'm sleepy. So sorry if I'm kind of a boring uh, presenter. Okay, datatier.net. And I'm going to build all. I don't know why. That's kind of... I'm going to go to uh, execute my store procedures because it's kind of confusing me that... Let's SQL Server Management Studio pop up here. Give it a second. I just launched the uh, that dot sql files being launched with a system dot diagnostics dot process dot start and i gave it this file name but it takes sql server management studio about 30 seconds or longer for it to say oh you're talking to me see there it's one of those i've thought it didn't work several times but sometimes windows they like to do a lot of stuff in the background which is great but sometimes you don't know okay and I am just going to execute this. I'm not really uh, sure why uh, it was telling me my delete procedure didn't work, but we're going to, I can always do this through the, but I want to just uh, try that one more time. I want to open up another project that hasn't been, I'll do this one. Cause I gotta figure this out. Uh, edit. I can always delete it through the database, but I would like to know. Don't really know. I'm gonna have to figure out. I may have to step through the code further to see why. Uh, save, save. Following fields are missing or invalid. Oh God. Okay. Um, bad project sorry we'll open up another project luckily I've got a bunch of them we'll go with this one can't touch my work one though so that's the one we can't touch so we're gonna go to this and go to oops yeah this is what we want try this one more time I just want to see well, I'm gonna try to delete one field and see if I get the same error okay so it didn't seem to have it on now. I might have just fixed it executing that store procedure, but that really seems weird because I don't remember changing that in the last uh, long time. Uh, so back to, let's go back to our little list here. I want to edit my list and just see. And we're going to have to write some logic in datatier.net that says don't write this for, uh, okay, say, Okay, so we fixed it by executing that store procedure. Apparently the store procedures for this project were out of date for the delete, I think. So anyway, it's kind of uh, good to know. So I think we fixed that. That was the main thing I wanted to do. And then the last thing we talked about in that little short video intro was when a new project is created, it uh, creates some default references and I have to uh, find that somewhere but let me see how uh, the stored oh, it's in the build all so I'm not here sorry let me go to the builder store procedure object creator okay and this I'm trying to remember how this works been a while Okay, so here's the create delete proc. We're going to go into here and we're going to do some. Uh, okay, so we have the proc type is delete, so we'll go into this. We'll probably have to add a little couple of if statements for only doing stuff. Write references. Update. Note. Update 1223 for another 15 minutes. It's almost Christmas Eve. Um, Delete procedures do not need. Actually, it's uh, store procedures, all of them. Yeah. Store procedures do not need any using statements. Found this out. So we're going to just take this out. Boom. And creating file name. Um. 
Okay, since we're not doing the using, we're going to go ahead and add two blank lines. Sorry. All right. Right. I'll change this. Right. Two blank lines. Okay. So that takes care of we're not writing the uh, any, uh, even if we created them somewhere earlier on, they won't get written, which is like a, it fixes the the symptoms without fixing the cure but it's kind of like the pharmaceutical industry a lot of their stuff but we want to see where the references came from rather than what I'm trying to find out really quickly before we our, our fix we just did just uh, just worked but I want to okay we just took that out but we have references let me see Create the file. Okay. Sorry, I'm just, this is probably even more boring than the rest of this videos. I'm just trying to think about what is uh, actually needing to be fixed here before I check this code in. Is I think I did actually fix it, but I want to know where my, uh, let me look at some of the init. For this method, no, don't have anything here. I was just trying to figure out where I um, create the references data table. I think I let me see if I have a create default. What I thought create default references. Okay, so I want to go to this. This is what I was looking for. This is our band-aid place we're going to fix it. So controllers, writers, store procedures. Okay, we don't even need this references set anymore. And this, well, for now, I'm going to leave the references set. Uh, okay, because we don't need the... Uh, we for sure don't need the using statements. I'm thinking, I don't think we even need that. I'm gonna just get rid of it. It might, uh, that little editor, the project editor, might expect there to be one, but we'll fix it if it does. Okay, and this is the one change I have to do here. If it's .NET 5, I do this, or .NET Framework, I do this. I no longer support .NET Core, but I used to do .NET Core here, but I'm trying to move on from .NET Core even though .NET 5 is basically the same as .NET Core, but trying to just stay at the latest as much as I can. But I've got a lot of old code on .NET Framework. Okay, so now we have all this saved. Close all, save, just make sure everything builds. And I know I should test this more, but I am gonna end this video and check this code in by the I'll put all the links in the description by the time I post it by the time you download it all this code will just work magically because my code always works that's why I don't write test but if there's any bugs I'll fix it uh, tomorrow but more than likely it's looking like everything we just did will work right there so we were just trying to uh, let me quickly before we end it I want to just make sure what we just did didn't uh, okay this is the problem. Okay, stop. I knew that was going to cause a problem. So this, create default references. So we, start procedure. Do, 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 do. Yes, store procedure. Oh, no. See, this is that code here. This isn't needed either. Neither is this. So see, that's all this code. Um, is uh, nope not needed that so all that code for kind of not really a hack but to handle it wasn't even needed it might be needed uh it's needed somewhere else actually it is needed in the data access component but it's not needed in the store procedures folder but that takes care of about four folders worth of unneeded files plus the region containing it so and we'll try one more time Okay, so I'm glad I tested it before I checked that in. I would have felt stupid 
anybody would have downloaded that so uh, first I'll open a project I haven't even built that let me let me open up a project that's actually a real project uh, um yeah that's fine and we'll just say I want to see what happens if you click here okay it's the references set is that but there aren't any but that needs to be let's go to the store procedure editor we're gonna further uh, fix our uh, little that's not it that's a builder we want our control stored procedure editor we don't need this and then but we do need the SQL output folder and that gets filled in for them I need to know what's the distance between that and that doesn't really matter but here we'll just do this oh see I didn't even use my uh, controls for the uh, okay let's just do three I didn't use my label browser control like I label text box browser control like I would have ordinarily. Okay, and then this align middles do the same thing for. Oh wait, I want the, that too. Okay, start with this and then say bam bam format align middles the one you touch first is the one that it compares the next things you touch to okay so now we have this doesn't even have that references set but so that's uh, good let me go to store procedure editor just trying to see selected references set and that needs that because the iWizard control has to have it so we're just gonna leave some of that as it is even though it's not really needed we'll see if that breaks anything so we're kinda this is a if I ever have to put this back store procedure references combo box not gonna be there anymore Okay, so kind of sad deleting old code, but it's no longer needed. If I ever determined I needed a using statement there, I could probably put it back. Okay, display dissected. This isn't needed. So we're going to find where this is being called from. Store procedure editor. I don't... I'm going to just do this for now because there's nothing that needs to be in there. Uh, that's part of that iWizard control. I'm not going to delete that. So we're just going to, I'll just play. Where's all that getting called? Okay, delete database. Okay, let me just see what else doesn't compile. Display selected references. Where is this getting called? Okay, well this isn't here. Edit store procedure references set button. Okay, where is that coming from? Ah, okay, this is, that's why that was still compiling, because this is no longer going to be here. Same with this new. Uh, is anything? I'm trying to think if any of this is needed. 
Okay, so I'm going to leave all that. Sorry, it's kind of a big change to make to that, but it's been needing to, since we don't need it. Okay. Store procedure references combo box. So we, we don't even have... I don't think I need this. Okay. Don't need that. Don't need that. Okay, try try that again. Okay. We don't even have this button anymore, so this isn't needed. Okay. So basically, we're just calling the parent. Okay. Well, at least we fixed that. So let's see if this works now. And we'll use that one. Go to manage actually sorry wrong part edit project and I'll just start doing this okay see we kind of messed it up because something got messed up this is the only one that doesn't work so we've got to look at our code. Apparently I've got some code that's probably testing for the references set. So I'm going to have to, so let's go fix that really quickly. Or actually, I think we just, uh, I deleted the method. I did. <laughs> You're a genius. Okay, let's go look at, get, uh, I'll just go to Team Explorer here, go to Changes. See if I can find my store procedure editor. Um, let me see if that's it. There's not, let me see how I did it before. Sorry, let me go to GitHub really quickly. Oh, sleepy, sleepy I am. Okay, gadditor.net, stored, go to client, controls, stored procedure, editor. Okay, display selected project. Okay, so I took out too much code. I don't know why I took all that out. So it's supposed to be, I need all this except for the, I'll go back to that. Sorry, got a little too happy with taking stuff out. Display selected references. I thought I had taken out. Okay. Uh, take that out. See what happens. Okay. That. If this compiles, we're okay then. Okay. So let's try that again. Sorry about that. Had a got over excited on deleting there. Okay, and next we're going to go to Edit Project, and I'll just start going through here. Now, the UI folder is something new, so that doesn't work yet. That's brand new code or something. I'm, I'm working on a UI builder, so you can, if you need to edit data in a table, you can just select the table in the, either a Windows Form Control or a Blazor project will get created for you. Okay, 
All right, that seemed to work. Now there's no changes there to say, but I'm gonna go ahead and just build and make sure I didn't break anything in build because build might be expecting some using statements, but seemed to work. Okay, so that is a good sign. Um, I'll do some more testing tomorrow, but I'm gonna check this code in because I believe we fixed it. All right, well, thanks for watching and sorry this makes for a super long video, but probably my longest video ever, but I wanted to just make some videos on how I edit this project because I think it's really neat and I think there's a little more I can do with it but I really like the I've always liked the all store procedure driven versus entity framework where it executes so much SQL trying to figure out what to update and to me that's I don't like change tracking you know I know when I need to save or not that's I've got my own way to do that but I don't think that should be part of the data access but Microsoft seems to what do they know right trillion dollar company and I'm doing really well all right well peace out Happy Christmas Eve in, I actually finished a, a minute before Christmas Eve, so congratulations. Take a little, take a minute off. All right, thanks for watching.
them to execute all the four procedures that he's going to go get my four procedures that people say and it's so weird that we're not going to see any or one that is not that much which is why no one will tell me that they have that much to say and then thanks for upgrading me that kid that went up there If you if you already have an existing project, all you have to do is get the latest code. I'm trying to think what the reason is for needing that that person. Oh well. Yeah, if you already have an existing one, you're gonna run this and this update code that we just created up here. Let's just run a new code that UI field.
Dead Rose Project came out and we just played with them. We didn't do anything seriously. And we got a record deal with them. And it's like that's been created. That's what's going on now. And that's why it's fucking radical right now. And that's why it's great. updated with some shit that just you know updates the shit because we have to you know have this thing better for the whole so mainly it's mostly new people getting into it you know every now and then somebody will pop up but it's like almost every time that you try and get this like new And I'll update it even with the last thing I need to do. Like my old cast thing. Okay, so that's finally complete this video. It was a, a long part. I did all the things that were asked in the beginning of the video. So I decided to take 15 minutes. And it took about almost two hours. But it, it you know, I still uh, got to do the, you know, the stuff that pays in open source just doesn't pay that much. That's the only problem with open source. Alright, thanks for watching and finally good night. Like I said earlier in the video, just be glad that your time is good. Now it's good morning, but maybe you're not going to be. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.